Greetings and salutations everyone, my name is Andrew Kirchhoff and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're talking about Tyler Boyd and his player profile going into the 2019 fantasy football season. I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on Tyler Boyd. He just recently signed a 4 year $43 million extension with the Cincinnati Bengals. So we're going to talk about him and his outlook going into 2019. Before we get into that, I want to remind you guys. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button, click the bell notification button to know when my content is out, when I'm live streaming, all that jazz. Thank you guys for the support. And let's go ahead and let's get into the video, shall we? Hey everybody, how's it going? Okay, so we're talking about Tyler Boyd today, but there's a reason behind Tyler Boyd. Besides the fact that the man was rained with money, as you can see, uh, just the other day, I want to talk about my 2019 draft kit that I've been building for... Uh, well over, I think, four or five months now. Um, like I've mentioned in the past couple months, I've been taking a lot of time, yes, as a one-man army over here, but I've been developing a draft kit for you guys for the 2019 season, and it's almost done. Um, you know, I haven't put out a video in a week. Well, a lot of it has to do with time constraints. I'm trying to finish editing and finish building that draft kit so it can be ready for you guys uh, by the start of August, hopefully. Uh, obviously, the training camp news of you know Zeke not showing up, Melvin Gordon not showing up, um, Derrick Henry in a boot today, um, guys like Sterling Shepard breaking his thumb, guys like Golden Tate getting popped for uh, PEDs, that kind of stuff, that kind of throws a wrench in my system. I got to go back, do some editing here and there, but it's no big deal. I've gone through the process. Now, what I wanted to go ahead and do today is I want to show you guys um, a bit of the draft kit specifically because of, you know, I want to know, I mean, your guys' opinion. Also, uh, give you guys an idea of what you're going to be getting in this draft kit. So let's go ahead and let's show that off, shall we? Okay, so this is Tyler Boyd's player profile going into the 2019 fantasy football season. Now, like I've mentioned before, I'm going to be having 130 plus player profiles in this draft kit alone. Now, there are discrepancies between players. Obviously, I can't write a full page on Ronald Jones. Ronald Jones didn't do anything last year. But there are players that have different forms of statistics, different uh, analytical breakdowns, different opinions. This entire player profile gives you guys my thoughts on Tyler Boyd going into the 2019 season, where I have him ranked, how he performed last year, and how he can take that performance from last year and go ahead and improve upon it in 2019. That's why we want to talk about this. On top of that, in my 2019 draft kit, like I've mentioned before, um, because, you know, th this 2019 draft kit idea was brought up by many of you. Many of you voiced your opinion. You said, Andrew, I'm really interested. If you're willing to make a 2019 draft kit, 100% I'll be willing to support. And I, I took it to heart. And I said, you know what, guys? I want to give you what you guys want in the community. You guys want flex rankings this season. You guys want more videos. It's all coming. Step by step, we're getting there. And this is a part of it. So on top of the player profiles, 130 plus that I've um, I'm, I'm editing, I'm, I think, let me look at my whiteboard. I've got the Jets, the Dolphins, and the Buffalo Bills, the three teams that are almost done. I got to edit them, and they'll be finished. Um, on top of that, in my 2019 draft kit, we're going to have per position by tier rankings for uh, three different scoring formats, full PPR, half PPR, and standard. On top of that, we're going to have a top 250 flex rankings for draft night. So if you have a draft within... You know, in the month of August, which many of us usually do, I know many of you have already drafted, but um, if you have a draft, you can take that top 250 list, go into the draft, and, you know, draft your best available player every time, and or, uh, you know, adjust accordingly. On top of that, my top five sleepers and busts for the 2019 season, and a lot more content that will be coming down the pipe that I will be mentioning in the coming days. This is more of an informal way of introducing it and kind of giving you guys an idea on what is going to be in this draft kit. Very informal because of the fact of the matter is, um, like I've mentioned before, I like the month of January. I, I mean, July, <laughs> July, not January. I like the month of July. I want to get this done. There will be a video in the coming days that will give full information about the entire process. Um, how you can get the 2019 draft kit, my 2019 draft kit. Uh, because to be honest, th this right now uh, is what's, what I've been working on for quite some time. It's going to be the cheapest um, fantasy football draft kit in the entire industry by far. 
Um, why? Because I love you guys, and I think fantasy football is fun, yes, but at the same time, everybody's got a ball and a budget. So um, we're going to approach it that way. So either way, let me scroll a little bit here, show you guys everything. If you want, go ahead and pause. I don't have Tyler Boyd's ranking yet because, well, I'm working on rankings because people keep getting injured and keep tossing around, but we're almost finished there. So anyway, let's go ahead, let's move back, and let's go ahead and talk about Tyler Boyd, right? Because that's what the whole video is on. Besides the player profile, we want to talk about Tyler Boyd, and we want to talk about what I see him producing in 2019 and how I think... To be honest, outside of him making that four-year, $43 million contract, he's going to be making a lot of you money this coming 2019 fantasy football season because of where he's being drafted. You know, as of late, uh, Tyler Boyd's kind of been slept on. Uh, and so has the entirety of the Cincinnati Bengals offense, uh, to be honest. I mean, Andy Dalton, A.J. Green, sure, they dealt with injuries last season, and that hurt the Bengals as a whole and their fantasy prospects. But to be honest... They're coming back healthy. They're coming back with a new head coach, Zach Taylor, who was the uh, quarterback coach for the Los Angeles Rams. They're going to bring youth to this team. They're going to bring a different culture, a different offense that's going to be firing on all cylinders come 2019. So I think Tyler Boyd, as of right now, extremely undervalued. Let's talk about what Tyler Boyd was able to accomplish last season. In only 14 games played, he produced 108 targets, 76 receptions, 1,028 receiving yards, 13.52 yards per reception, and seven receiving touchdowns. Now, all of this led and accumulated to Tyler Boyd finishing as the number 16 wide receiver in half-point PPR scoring formats last season. Absolutely incredible, especially because of the fact that a lot of people didn't see Tyler Boyd coming out, you know, coming out of the woodwork. Um, the year prior, um, in 2017, Tyler Boyd missed a good chunk of his season, six games due to an MCL injury. Now, the thing to kind of look out for, Tyler Boyd also in 2018, the two games that he missed was due to an MCL injury. So we got to be a little, little careful. There's anybody, a doctor out there, I want to know how big of a deal is MCL sprains because he's had two of them in the last two seasons. That could be a little um, a red flag, perhaps. I don't know what, to what extent, but you never know. Anyway, he produced, and he was the mid-tier wide receiver too last season, um, and shockingly so. To be honest, I think you know Tyler Boyd was a waiver wire pickup in many of our leagues because of the fact that we just really didn't see him coming. We thought John Ross, who you know with that speed was going to be able to produce, didn't even show up. John Ross, a couple touchdown grabs, not a big deal. Now Tyler Boyd, majority of his work is out of the slot position, uh, and the fact of the matter is that's perfect. With A.J. Green on the outside pulling a lot of attention, a guy like Tyler Boyd over the middle, uh, short routes, and also being able to stretch the field. Uh, he was fantastic last season. 70% um, of his targets were caught last season. Perfect for the slot position. On top of that, uh, being able to stretch the field. Had 21 receptions of 20-plus yards last season, which ranked 7th amongst all active wide receivers. Uh, just It just keeps... The more the merrier. It keeps giving. A gift that keeps on giving. That's what Tyler Boyd is. It really is. Last season, he had a 21.68% target share within this offense. Now, here's the thing. There are two different Tyler Boyds. There's the Tyler Boyd with Andy Dolan and A.J. Green in the lineup. And then there's the Tyler Boyd without Andy Dolan and A.J. Green in the lineup. Now, um, once Andy Dolan and A.J. Green, they were gone. Or I actually, once A.J. Green was out of the lineup... Um, Tyler Boyd was forced to kind of play on the outside, couldn't sit in his comfortable home in the slot position, um, yet he still was able to produce six consecutive games of 50 plus yards or a touchdown in those product in you know in those um, allotted games. But it just wasn't the same. Uh, when it comes to fantasy points with and without AJ Green in the lineup, it was about um, a three point fantasy point difference um, with AJ Green. Uh, Tyler Boyd was averaging 14.6 fantasy points per game, and without him, 11.05. So about three and a half points, 35 receiving yards or so. But either way, it makes a pretty big difference when we're talking about a potential wide receiver two in the NFL. Last season, a lot of uh, Tyler Boyd's production came in the red zone. Uh, last season, he was targeted 10 times for a 15.38% target share in the red zone. Obviously not great, but there is a factor in that. With his 10 targets, he caught 9 receptions, 4 or 5 touchdowns. Okay, so a 90% catch rate in the red zone. That's great. I see that number and those targets, targets and receptions, moving up this coming season. Why? Because in the first 8 weeks of the season, he had 8 of those 10 targets. 
majority of his opportunity came when Adrian Green was healthy. He was pulling attention away, and that 100% helped Tyler Boyd in his fantasy production. Um, in the eight games that they played together, Tyler Boyd scored, I think, 63% of his entire season's fantasy production. Uh, 116 points, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody can go back to the player profile. It's 100% on there. The fact of the matter is, Tyler Boyd is a wide receiver too in this league. Now I understand, Adrian Green's coming back. There are other wide receivers. Cooper Cup's coming back. They're going to slot into that wide receiver two position. But I don't understand why so many people are undervaluing a guy like Tyler Boyd. I personally don't see it as such. I don't think he's going to be the number six, 16 wide receiver, excuse me. But I still think within this offense, it's being extremely underrated. He has a great opportunity to be, I mean, a serviceable wide receiver too on your roster. Now, where is he being drafted as of right now? Um, it's going, uh, you know, obviously in different drafts, he goes in different spots. But as of right now, uh, I kind of dwindled it down to the wide receiver 23 through 26 coming off the board. In my Scott Fishbowl draft, he was the number 26 wide receiver to come off boards. I've seen him earlier in a mock draft that I did a couple days ago come off as the 23rd wide receiver off the board. So to be honest, he's really being drafted as a wide receiver three. Now, if you can go ahead and get him at that specific value, fantastic. I don't want people going out and drafting Tyler Boyd any earlier. Why? Because he's going to sit in my lap and if he's going to fall to me in the draft, fantastic because that's just going to make me the money that's floating around here. You get it? Tyler Boyd, 100% being undervalued right now. And I think going into the 2019 season, with what he was capable of doing last season in only 14 games, with A.J. Green in the lineup, uh, I only see the Cincinnati Bengals offense improving with a new offense coordinator, like I mentioned, a new offense uh, coming into this lineup. I mean, if they go ahead, if the Bengals go ahead and kind of um, have a pseudo um Los Angeles Rams offense, they are 100% capable of doing that. They've built a better offensive line. They've drafted two offensive linemen in this last uh, in the 2019 NFL draft to bolster that up for Andy Dalton. You got to keep him healthy. You have the single back of uh, Mark, uh, Mark Ingram, um, Joe Mixon, and then you have the two tight ends. Great. You have Uzama, Eifert, and then you got your three wide receiver set with A.J. Green, Tyler Boyd, and then you can flip around that last one, whether it's John Ross or somebody else wants to step up. I think they have the personnel to be extremely successful this season, and I think Tyler Boyd's just being extremely undervalued. So that's my thought process on Tyler Boyd. I wanted to go ahead, thank you guys for watching today's video. If you have any comments, concerns, questions, please hit me up down below. Um, I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Um, are you interested in the 2019 uh, draft kit? Hopefully you are. There will be more um, content on that specifically. I will have a video coming out. It has to be coming out um, within the next five days. Um, it's going to have the entire breakdown. It's going to have all the information required, how you can access it, how you can attain it, um, and how important it is for this channel's future. Uh, and to be honest, uh, your future in the fantasy season. So thank you everybody for watching. Until next time, if you, ha if you like this video, go down, click the like button. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button. More comment, uh, I mean, more content coming down the pipe uh, because we're only just getting started. It's August, or it's not even August, it's July. And uh, training camps are just beginning. So thank you, everybody, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.